Welcome to the introduction of the issuer API by Vault ID, which enables you to extend any app with credential issuance capabilities. So what do you get with the issuer API? You can take any raw W3C compliant data structure and create a signature. But you can also sign the raw data structure and then issue it directly via OID for VC. And by using our data functions, you have great flexibility when it comes to information that will be placed in the credential on the time of claiming. Meaning, if you now issue a credential with certain data only to be filled when a user claims that credential, you can make sure that the credential always contains the most current and accurate information. Let's now jump into a quick demo and understand how issuance works. Because at the end, it's just one API call. Click the link in the description to go directly to the Getting Started Guide so you can run the issuer API on your system. I already have it up and running here. And here I'm now in the Swagger Docs, which I will be using for this demo. Here are the two main functions we will be using. One is the signing function, where you just sign a raw credential. And the other is where I can issue myself a W3C verifiable credential as a chart. We also have SD chart and also soon MDoc. But now let's start with our chart. And here I will just use the example which is provided, so a university degree. The great thing is that as you can see here, it gives you complete flexibility. So you can just take any W3C compliant data structure and provide it here in the body of the request. And the API will take that, create a signature for it, and then create an OIDC compliant claim URL, which you then can share with your users. And if you go to credentials.vault.id, you see a bunch of different data structures, like a bank ID, a like KYC data credential, a verifiable ID, which you can just copy and then paste it to issue. But now comes the most interesting part. Because to ensure that the data in the credential is always accurate and up to date on the time of issuance, we need to provide some kind of mapping or data which should be then filled in the credential when the user actually claims it. And here we have these data functions. They come with a syntax where you have these opening and closing errors and then any data function we provide. So here we have this UUID, which simply creates a unique identifier. And as you can see, it maps to the ID, which in turn maps to the ID, so the highest level ID in the credential data structure. So here we have the credential. So the ID will be this right here. So this ID will be replaced with a unique identifier when the user claims the credential. Then we have the issue edit, the subject edit, and the timestamp, and also some utilities like timestamp in 365 days to also provide a cure, an accurate expiration date. This already gives you great flexibility but there's one little feature which gives you all what you want because you can then just use whatever data you want in the credential. And that's called our webhook data function. Also again, it's provided in the syntax. So here, for example, there's a degree and here the name should be replaced. So I provide here a webhook with an URL. And whatever value this URL returns will be inserted as a name. We also have a utility which is called webhook JSON, so that if the URL returns a JSON, you could, for example, replace the whole credential subject if you wanted to. Okay, so now that we understand the mapping, how we provide the VC data. 
let's talk a little bit about the keys because at the end you need some kind of key to assign a credential, which is the issuer key here. When using this API, you can just simply generate an example key, which is in this format. And this is then provided here in the issuance key. The issuer did could also be generated by simply taking this key and creating a did. In this scenario, you see here we have the type local, which uses our basic KMS, which is not something you would use in production, but you can use to build out tests and try out the API. For more production ready use cases, you would use a TSA key, a key which is managed by the HashiCorp vault. But now let's go to the issuance. We provided our key, our issuer did, the VC, and the mapping. And now let's execute this. And what we receive is this OpenID credential offer URL, which we can now either render as a QR code, so somebody with a compliant wallet could just scan this QR code and then receive the credential. We could provide it behind a button as a link where when the user clicks on it, it opens in a, in a wallet. Or we can just take as it is, go to the Vault ID web wallet and then click here to the scan to receive or present credential. And here we can enter this URL manually. And let's receive it. So here we have our university degree credential and I accept that. And if we now open this, so view in JSON, we see here that the ID was replaced, that the expiration date was replaced, the issuance date, the issue ID, and the credential subject ID. And with that, we issued ourselves a credential with one click. And now it's your turn. Get started for free with our open source issuer API by Vault ID and start issuing credentials via OID for VC. Click the link in the description to get started. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And with that, happy building. See you next time.